I'm about ready to execute five separate fabrication projects over the next couple of weeks, which aim specifically to improve our recovery capacity, our vehicle stability, our departure angle clearance, and the ability to tow our Jeep. I got my list, I got my caliper, I got my tape measure, I got my gloves. That's what I'd like to have. That means I've started without Cheryl and I'm in trouble. I have a number of welding and fabricating projects for Maximus that need to get done. The first one of them here is in front of you, as you can recall, last summer. Uh, we got stuck. It was an $832 unpleasantry, and I've had this 18,000 pound worn winch sitting on the shop floor for the last three years, so it's time to get it on. So project number one is to fabricate a winch mount for this, which uh, you can see kind of the pieces here, how it's going to bolt onto the front of the frame and sit inside of a cradle here. That's uh, the first project is to get the winch on. The next project is that once the winch is on, the bumper won't go on anymore. The bumper will not cover over the winch. So now I've got to build a bumper or something that looks like a bumper more accurately. So that's project number two. Um, I also want that those the bumper sponsons on either side here to be uh, some kind of a storage bin where I can stow my recovery gear because having the stuff right there by the winch is, is the right place to have all my recovery gear. This is project one, building the winch mount of the multiple projects. This is the first phase of that project. To let you know how I normally attack these problems is I have taken the, the old bumper off of the truck. I've measured the front of the truck. I've come up with a concept design which looks something, something like this. This is just a little hand sketch with some critical dimensions on it. I've uh, conceptually determined what I think I want to use for materials that I think may be or should be available. Uh, when I buy most of my materials, I buy them from the remnant section at the metal shop. They're about half price. And so the basis of this bumper was intended to be this big piece of, of six inch by four inch by five sixteenths angle. I was actually planning probably to use a, th I was think I was going to find this in a three eighths thick. I was actually very fortunate to find it in 5 eighths. It saves a little bit of weight and it's strong enough. These are the two mounts for the, uh, for the f end of the frame. So you're looking at it from the back side. So this is, this is where the frame ends mount, this mounts to. The frame ends also contain a recovery point which goes through this hole and there's a cutout in front of the, uh, front of the winch, winch mount here that allows me to access uh, those recovery points. The winch will sit in here and there will be a hole sliced in here that provides uh, access for the cable to come out. And this is going to eventually become the basis for a building a bumper. So once I get the winch mount all, all flushed out, then I'm going to you know, basically cover it. I have some material over here on the side. I have a big piece of uh, box tube, several pieces of box steel tube that I'm going to actually cut up to make the rest of the bumper with. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like. I, I haven't, this is, you know, that one little drawing that I just showed you is all the detail that I've put into it so far. This is unfortunately a little bit of a design as you go. Um, I don't typically do this, but for complex shapes like this, uh, I could spend a whole day designing this thing and then go to the metal shop and find out I couldn't, couldn't find what I needed. It turns out to be easier than this, and hey, it's a bumper. It, do it doesn't have to move. There's, there's no moving parts. It just has to be strong enough, which I'm pretty sure it will be. So the next steps here are to basically tack all this material together take it and put it back on the truck, make sure it fits the way I expect it to fit, and then when I, and I'll bring it back over here, and if, if anything needs to be adjusted, I'll adjust it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll weld it up solid. Which here it is, all tacked together, mounted on the frame where it's supposed to go. The winch is sitting in here. Some of the observations of what I need to do is these factory recovery points are bent downward and I'm going to take them out and flip them over so they're up, up upward because I'm going to have to cut this out some more in order to use them if I was going to leave it that way. 
and I, I think that they're better off just being upward. I have just enough room to change the, the clutch drive. The winch control actually bumps into the dat here a little bit, but I, I, I've already rotated it forward a little bit, so it's, it's still but it's putting pressure on this. There's some cables on the back side that need to be uh, lengthened or loosened, one of the two. But I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to use for protection, this is a piece of 16 gauge steel that's perforated and I'm going to actually build a grill uh, behind the winch in front of the radiator to protect the radiator from any, any rope wrap or anything like that that gets drawn into the winch. It'll be a combination of three quarter square tube and this will be welded in so it'll, it'll be reinforced. It won't just be this. And I'm probably going to cover a good portion of the other portions above the winch and, and over on the right hand side with this material as well. Again, this is design on the fly. I'm really pretty happy with uh, the way it goes. I'm probably not going to put anything underneath of it. It's just going to improve my front clearance. And the question that I was just asked by my dear wife was how much does this lengthen our uh, overall vehicle length? Well, the original bumper, these recovery points were just about flush with the front of the bumper. Maybe they stuck out a little bit. So I'm adding about three, maybe four inches to the total length of the truck, which is already 24 foot eight. So I'll still be below 25, I believe, which is kind of key. There's a lot of national parks that have a 25 foot length limit in places. Uh, I'm getting down to the end of the winch mount. Uh, one of the last things I'm here I'm working on is this plate right here. So because this is a very large winch, I'm using a large, a half inch diameter, actually a 13 millimeter a synthetic line on it and the guide for the synthetic line should be aluminum because the high pressure of an off angle pull will cause the the line to rub substantially on the the hawse which is what this is called and with synthetic line you can use use a, a aluminum plate rather than rollers which is what it takes for the steel cable because the, the steel cable will cut slots in the aluminum plate if you were to use it so this is a benefit um, and I've had to make my own aluminum plate because this winch is larger than your standard winch, is wider than your standard winch. So this plate is going to get bolted on with these 3 8 inch socket head cap screws. So that's what I'm going to be doing is drilling and tapping the bumper. This will be the first uh, bolted up test fit since uh, a number of things have happened. I've flipped the uh, toe points over. I've got the entire thing welded up. I've got the, the plate on. I've got the back plate welded on and my goal here is to make sure all the, the bolt holes fit because I drilled those. So this is what I'm doing. I'm making pieces for a bumper. This is a piece of six inch by four inch steel tube, eighth inch wall, and I'm cutting it into angles with which I'm going to mount on my bumper. So one piece will go on here like this. And another matching piece, because this is not the matching piece, this is the piece for the other side, will go on, on the back side to make a, a big box on the end of the bumper. Okay, but I have to have, these two are right and left hand versions, so I'll cut another piece and I'll have two rights and two lefts, and from that I can make the bottom section of the bumper. Right here is inherent here, as you see this right here, this is a weld seam. You can see it on the outside here, it's been ground off. This this piece of six by four inch tube is made from a piece of sheet and each of these corners is roll formed. The problem is, is it's not a zero stress uh, construction. So what happens when I cut it, and you can see from this piece right here, you can see what happens to the stress in the part. It curls inward. So if I try to cut it with a saw, it curls and pinches the saw. To the point where I can't make it any can't make it through, and it's very difficult to try to hold it open because this is fairly strong steel. So what I'm doing instead is I'm cutting it with a cutting torch. So when I cut it, I leave a little bit of gap right here to support the twist that's in there, and then I'll cut all the way down here till it's all the way through, and then I'll come back and cut this piece right here. And when that happens, this whole thing will curl in on itself, and I'll flip it open and cut the other half. And what I did with that is when I get done, I'll take it over to my anvil and I'll hammer on this corner right here and straighten it back to 90 degrees. Okay, here it is. 
Um, I am definitely ready for a shower. We've just finished the bumper. I just degreased it and getting ready to paint it. Uh, in my particular case, I built these two boxes, so I don't have the, haven't made the, the front covers yet on the boxes yet. They're going to be an aluminum plate with a latch, the same latches that I used in my bag box. Hopefully they'll have the same keys. I just ordered them. This is it. I guess some of the features are the, the factory re recovery points are here. One of the things that I did was to add on the bottom here, I put a receiver hitch on both sides of it here. Um, this is not a project the way I normally do them. I, I started this project off with a small hand sketch and I almost never went back to paper from there. I didn't, I didn't do any design work. I went to the metal shop. I found the materials I needed. I designed on the fly. Um, I had enough material. I didn't have to go back. I had to go back and get the, the material for the doors. I, it, this is one of those projects that probably take me twice as long as it would have if I had designed it and cut the pieces and then welded it together. And also there's probably a lot more welding in this because I, I flame cut parts that ended up being ragged. Anyway, I think it looks good. It's going to get painted aluminum color. So it is time now to move that over, over here. bumper that I built. It's uh, not particularly aesthetic and I kind of knew that going into it that it was going to be function over uh, fashion because there was so much function that needed to be uh, done. This is an 18,000 pound worn 24 volt electric winch. It runs off the camper battery and the 220 amp alternator. So it's uh, got lots of power so it should be able to do fine. Uh, my biggest problem was in creating a strong enough winch mount for it. I knew that I was going to have to focus on the winch mount. and so I also wanted to be able to stand on the bumper and get into the engine compartment. So I can literally stand anywhere in here. I can step up here. I can actually stand right on top of the winch. I can stand on top of the, the, the side toolboxes. The other thing I wanted to have was I wanted to have storage compartments on either of the sides so I could put all my recovery gear in there. Uh, they're all done except for uh, the one on the right here is missing, missing its latch because when I ordered latches I forgot that I needed two of them. I guess I only ordered one of them. Anyway, this is a, it's a box about a foot tall and about a foot wide and about a foot deep but it's got an angled front end. Uh, the front's about is an eighth inch aluminum plate that will latch on. I'll store all my recovery gear in there. <laughs> I had a, quite a quandary trying to figure out how to put the license plate on here. I decided that because uh, synthetic line is sensitive to ultraviolet light, I needed to keep it from being exposed to light. And so I knew I was going to have to put this cover on top of it, and I just decided to cover over the whole thing. And uh, I built a couple, a couple of custom uh, wing nuts that screw in the front of the winch, and that way I can completely protect the, the winch line from all manner of abuse and the winch. This right here is the other portion of it even though I may co cover this I have to cover this so it was good that it actually just covered that over. Kind of disguises the fact that there's a winch there. Not so if you don't know I don't have a hook on the front of the cable I actually have a loop eye. This is designed to either to work with a soft shackle and so this is just simply a large block of aluminum with a hole in it. it snugs up really well against the face of the bumper. And it stays right there. Talking a little bit about other recovery criteria that I had. I wanted to be able to jack the front of the truck up. And my intention is, is in a short period of time here, I'm going to start building a recovery jack that's going to be able to lift the front of the, or the back of the truck out of the ground if it becomes dug down. Uh, in order to do that, I need to have something very substantial and very closely connected to the frame. So I've added these two uh, receiver tubes on it here so I can put 
something in there that I can grab a hold of the front of the jack the, the, of the vehicle and, and lift it up. So those are very substantial uh, mounting points. I also wanted to make sure that I honored the in, in, in the bumper being extremely substantial from here to here because it has to be to, to be able to provide uh, support for the winch. I didn't want to make the whole thing a battering ram. I wanted to make sure that it still had crumple zones in it that that the original bumper did have. So despite the fact that this looks like one big piece here, this material right here is only a six, an eighth of an inch thick. This material is five sixteenths of an inch thick. So this whole corner box is an eighth inch thick bottom sides and back and a, and a sixteenth of an inch thick on the side. Um, so those, those corners, if, if struck, would compress. So my goal was to build this bumper at less than 150 pounds um, so the winch weighs 97 pounds, the bumper weighs 144 pounds. So I have a net weight gain of less than 200 pounds, uh, which is probably pretty good. Uh, a lot of the aftermarket bumpers that I looked at that were just bumpers, they were 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, and they typically weighed 100 to 120 pounds, 130 pounds, somewhere in that vicinity, and that did not include a winch mount. So this is not a particularly beautiful uh, winch uh, and, and bumper design. I designed it for functional criteria, much more than beautiful criteria, and, <laughs> and I succeeded. Uh, but one of the other features of the bumper is this perforated panel because it does block out the heater core. The old bumper used to come down to about right here, so I've kind of compensated for the blockage of the, the radiator cores. There is about six inches or so of airflow space underneath of it that I think will help quite a bit. I put the perforated panel in the back here to try to to give everybody as much breathing room as that I could and time will tell whether or not I've got enough uh, ventilation. I'm also contemplating replacing this plastic fascia grill here with something a little bit more breathable as well. well everybody thanks for watching and we're both very happy that the winch is now finally installed. It was a little late, but it's done now, and we hope we never have to use it. It's the 1st of November, and we are in Idaho. <laughs> we have been on the road for about a week, uh, traveling using our new equipment. This video only covered the first two projects. The next three projects will be on the video after this. Do you think I should tell him? Do, do you think I should tell him? <laughs> Do I have 30 days?